right if else would be now we're just beginning to start another interesting section of computer programming called conditionals conditionals are a tool in programming that help us to enhance or, or maximize the intelligence of the computer and basically today we're going to be using the if else if else statements are used to tell computers um, to do things if some conditions are met it's like saying if you are hungry eat food which means you wouldn't eat food if you're not hungry so that way the computer you'd keep doing what you are doing when you start feeling hungry or if you start feeling hungry then you eat anyway um, in this activity or in this lesson we'll see how it works now the, look at this the cloud is blocking the view you've played this B game severally but right now the bee cannot see what is under the cloud there could be a flower there and there may not be so if there is a flower the bee needs to collect the nectar if there's no flower the bee should do nothing so let's look at this code now it says repeat three times move so it's going to move one two three if the flower if at flower get nectar so what's going to happen is actually that the bee is going to move to the cloud and try to get nectar if there's a flower underneath but if there's no flower nothing is going to happen okay so let's let's try and see how we can make some activities now there are more clouds check underneath every cloud to see if it is hiding a flower before you get nectar if there is a flower underneath the cloud the bee will need to get nectar so since you are not sure because right now if you just say if you tell your code um move forward move forward turn right move forward now you are at this point you don't know if there's a nectar there if you say get nectar and there's no nectar there you have a bug because you are telling the computer to do what cannot be done and this is why we need to first check so the conditional statements save you from having an error so if at flower get nectar okay then do what move forward again and you are supposed to do the same thing if at flower again get nectar but okay so we do that uh oh sorry if at flower get nectar and move forward and uh, if at flower again then get nectar so let's see if that works you see that works if we had just used the get nectar here without checking the condition we would have had a bug let me try it let me show you if we just say move forward move forward turn right move forward then get nectar then move forward and get nectar because we are not sure what is under if we run this code we would have a bug look at this see there's a bug because we're not sure that there was if there was nectar under this and that is why we use the conditionals so um, instead of acting as if we are sure we just say if get nectar of course we didn't use our loops here so we have excess blocks of code we could actually use our loops to make those blocks of code fewer um, maybe we do that here okay now there are one two three four five six seven blocks we don't know if there are nectars if there are flowers under them the bee has to check every one of them before getting before deciding whether to get flower or not so you can only collect nectar from flowers but you can check any space to see if there is a flower if there's a flower under any of the clouds the bee will need to collect it and we can only use five blocks of code so what do we do well um, first thing go to the first block then if at flower do what get nectar and then move forward how many times do we need to do this one two three four five six seven mm, seven let's see if at flower get nectar that's five but what's our best shot at this um 
disturbing are we sure it's going to move forward after this now if we do this we're likely going to have a bug it's going to go to the first place but it can't keep moving so we need to find a way to um, probably put the move forward inside the loop okay inside the loop yes so seven times move forward loop and flower get nectar so let's try it again good so it's that way it goes forward and each time it goes forward it checks is there nectar if yes then i take it if no i keep moving so it doesn't waste the get nectar blocks when there is no nectar in this puzzle we know that every flower has exactly one nectar but the flowers aren't spaced evenly so get all the nectar using as few blocks as possible well in this case we know it's there so it's basically just the same thing we're gonna do again um repeat the block how many times one two three four five six seven so we move forward leaf at flower what do we do we simply get nectar and we run it about seven times let's see that should work now okay so that works for us too now collect all of the nectar using as few blocks as possible uh -huh. now we actually combine our if statements with our loops so we need to go one two three four five six then turn and go one two three four five six so uh what we need to do first is repeat six times okay move forward if at flower get nectar okay one two three four five six then we do what turn left move forward twice well okay move forward move forward turn left again and they were to repeat all of this a second time but now how do we make this with as few blocks as possible already we are on the ninth block and that's not what we want to do so what do we do what do we do what do we do um, okay turn left move forward move forward and then turn left again then start afresh maybe we repeat everything here twice because it's the same pattern that comes like this this way as it goes this way when we check every block of code so we repeat the whole thing twice and then yeah that's 10 blocks of code let's see if that works yep i think that works so it ends up checking every place good so that's how we're combining our if statement with loops so there are conditionals at this point you are beginning to combine the different functions and powers of programming to see how to create seemingly intelligent apps that rather than you telling it what to do the computer can figure things out on its own now i just want to make honey some of these clouds might have honeycombs under them be sure to check if a honeycomb is hiding behind each cloud if there's a honeycomb the bee will only need to make honey once so what do we do forward forward check left forward forward check so basically here um we repeat um so forward forward am i sure if at honeycomb make honey then do what turn left this is to be repeated twice uh, am i 
I sure will write about this. Let's try it out. That's the beauty of programming. You don't need to be sure. You can try something out. Good. We were actually right. Okay. So uh, let me replay that so you can look at that code again. So we simply put the make honey the if honeycomb inside the loop. Good. Let's move on. It seems like there's a little bit more fun in this activity. It may be new, so don't be surprised if they're a little bit challenging, but I'm sure you'll understand how it works. Sometimes a cloud covers a flower, sometimes it covers a honeycomb. Now, this is where we're using two conditions, if, else, because we are not sure if what is under the cloud is a flower or a honeycomb. So um, use the if, else block to collect nectar at flowers and make honey at honeycombs. So now we want to go forward forward so now we are there but we want to check if it's a flower get nectar what if it's not a flower then make honey now if else are used when you have only two conditions just two conditions it's either a flower or a honey so or, or a honeycomb so if it's a flower get nectar else which means it is not a flower that means it is a honeycomb so the if else comes in where there are only two options so let's look at this yeah it was a flower so it got a flower so with the if else you are testing for two conditions at the same time if it is not this else this so the if else helps us to test two conditions at the same time look carefully at the code below what do you think will happen after you click run Remember, there will only be one honeycomb and one flower behind each cloud. So look at this. What do we do? Repeat three times. Go forward. If at flower, get nectar. Else, make honey. So each time it goes to any block, it checks. Is this a flower or a honeycomb? If it's flower, make nectar. If it's honeycomb, make honey. Now, what's going to happen here? The bee will get nectar at each flower and make honey at each honeycomb. Um, yeah. I think this is what's going to happen. The bee will try to get nectar from both flowers and honeycomb. No, it's actually the if else. So let's look at it. So whatever is there, it's going to pick this. Whether it's a honeycomb or it's a flower, it's going to pick whatever it needs. So that's the if else statement. All right, challenge puzzle. Are you ready for this? I'm not going to be solving challenge puzzles for you. I'll let you do this by yourself, but challenge. There will be either a flower or a honeycomb under each of the clouds. Collect nectar once there is a flower, otherwise make honey because there is a honeycomb. So what do you do? You actually move here, pop, 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 three steps, check if it's a honeycomb or if it's a flower, pick what is there, turn, go like this, turn, go like this. And so you're going to check all four places. Remember your loops and your if-else. In this activity, you're using both loops and the if-else. So, like I said, I'm not going to solve this for you. Figure it out and find the answer to it yourself. Okay, that's a challenge activity. So try it out and finish up the lesson. Good luck. See you.